I agree with you completely. It's kind of become a dark entertainment channel, you know, the news. Thank you. Like, yeah. There's too much, there's too many personalities, there's too much focus on the wrong thing. And I, I've never been a great TV person. So A, turn the TV off. But I, through this whole pandemic, I've started a new regime of every morning, I just pull up the uh, NPR news on my computer, you know, like just the headlines. Um, first thing I do in the morning and I just read through, I check the, you know, the statistics on the virus and stuff. And then I'm done, you know, I just get the basically the, the, the main points for the day. That's it, you know, no, no CNN, none of that, because they just bang on about, you know, it's, 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 uh, you know, they're getting rating, you know. That's what it is. It's, it, this is a ratings game. And, uh, it's, oh, it's, you know, it's, it really focuses on a lot of negativity and you don't need to be ignorant to the facts, um, you know, uh, to, to know what's going You can know what's going on, but you don't need to be dragged down by it. Yeah, we were actually in Australia and, uh, and then sh right after that, stopped at uh, Auckland, New Zealand. Um, and I think we got home for about one week um, before we started a short run in the Northwest up in uh, Washington State. We started getting news about um, some guy had the virus at our show in New Zealand. And then it was kind of like the first time they'd, they'd heard of it there. Um, it, we were on the news in New Zealand, you know, and we were traveling up to Washington to start playing up there. Um, so it was literally, it felt like the, you know, like one of those cartoons where the earth was cracking and we were running and it, you know, people were falling into the crack. Um, so we just kind of, uh, we, we kept going for a couple of days um, until we were in Portland, Oregon. And literally the, the night we played in Portland, we came off stage to hear that the, I guess the governor had uh, had shut down large gatherings. Um, so, you know, just during that week, people started canceling things. Um, and obviously everyone was looking at everyone else to see, you know, what was the right thing to do. Everyone was, uh, didn't really know what it was, uh, you know, how dangerous things were. And then this chain reaction just started and we ended up, you know, sitting in our bus going, where should we go? <laughs> what should we do next? Um, we actually drove down to Boise, which was our next scheduled uh, show. And we just sat in a hotel room there, there as uh, everything else shut down. Um, and, and just kind of, I actually was in Boise in a, in a hotel looking out the window and realized no one was outside. <laughs> You know, like the whole, uh, you know, literally no one was even walking around. I walked out to try and get some food and there's like nobody around and people were wiping things already. Um, yeah, it was pretty kind of apocalyptic in a way, you know. And then uh, we were all just concerned that we'd get home, um, you know, without being stuck somewhere. But, uh, but yeah, when we got back in that little break, we heard that some kid had it at our show in Auckland. And those, those, all those shows over there, it was a little bit scary because there's GA floor. So all the people were moshing and everything. So God knows how many people got infected at that last gig that we did over there. But uh, we got back and then it really hit the fan when we just started to do some Northwest shows. And then we did two of our gigs and then the last three of the five that were on that little mini run up there in the Northwest got canceled. So we just came home and that was kind of the end of the deal. A couple of our crew guys got infected and stuff, but we've been fortunate enough. At least all the band members made it out alive at this point. And, uh, but here we are now just stuck in limbo. We were supposed to be starting our biggest run of, a, of the album cycle um, like in a week or something, I guess. I don't know. I can't remember the exact dates, but, uh, but it's all canceled now. It's today. It's, it was supposed uh, to be our first show today. Oh, the, I knew it was coming yeah. up, but, uh, but now there we go. Here we here we are for God knows how long. So we're just making the best of it. It was a real chain reaction that suddenly started to happen. Um, you know, people started canceling. I remember we were in the Northwest and then I think Pearl Jam canceled a tour that hadn't even started yet, you know. Um, so people started preempting what was going to happen. Um, and then the promoters started shutting down basketball games. We just drove to Boise and sat there and, 
and just kind of watched everything close down and uh, and then just and sat there for a day or two and uh, even the streets got quiet in Boise if that's even possible you know it felt like it was following us around you know um and uh all the walls just kind of in like this and uh then there was there was nothing left to do apart from go home so it was it was a bit of a confusing time i got a new drum set right at the end of our last tour so i'm going to be heading into the studio and putting that all together and work out a new rig for the next tour and just kind of keep things progressing however i can and practicing so that's you know whatever i can do to make the time useful i am um the original thought tends to be um unstructured it's just a a pulse or a rhythm or a melody if i if i come up with a, an idea um i like the i like the uh either the urgency of it cutting a little bit short or uh the uncomfortability of it going a little bit long um and that's as far as i think about it technically when i first come up with an idea um and i might have a a cycle of notes that repeats itself that sounds a little bit like I've heard it before um, and so I'll stretch it out a little bit just to give it a little more breath and only later will you know Danny will listen to it he'll always find some kind of groove he'll hear it the same way where it's just a feeling it's not um, it's not necessarily uh, an amount of numbers you know or a group of notes when people get to hear the final finished songs um it's come from a very uh, a place of emotion of feeling um that's where it originated sometimes when if we get a stuck you know then I'll actually count and go hey what time is this and a lot of time we just kind of feel it we don't really even count it out because it's more of a feeling thing but it, as the songs develop and we want to find more possibilities, we'll go, okay, well, this is in 21, so we can play three sevens or, you know, seven threes or, you know, different combinations. Often we'll actually, we'll take this piece that we've come up with now, um, Adam's playing guitar over it, we've put scaffolding on it, everyone kind of has a common language so we can talk about it. And then we'll like go backwards from that and try and simplify it. We'll cut out the, the extra bits and pieces and kind of put it into a more commonly heard groove, you know, like a 4-4 four, four or, um, you know, or perhaps in 6 or something. When we're writing the, the, the music, there's a lot of uh, trying to come up with a universal way of explaining one thing. I mean, there's some points in some of the new songs where Adam is like, let's just like slow it down even more when we're doing it live, you know cuts down to this just this guitar part and just he just slows it right down where it's almost uncomfortable because he knows it's going to pick back up you know when we come together as tool we try not to overdevelop our individual ideas so we just come in with a pile of of building blocks and share them with each other to see what the other person receives from that information i actually um sent sent a riff to Danny the other night and it sounded really interesting to me and and quite odd the timing of it it's just a thing that cycles around but I sent it to Dan and I was like do you know I haven't even tried to count this out do you know what it is he's like let's not count it let's jam it first let's not even think about it I think someone was talking about how great it is to be in the room with a band Dave you were um, I've, I've kind of had enough of that for a few years. <laughs> like we, we were really hard at it for several years with, with tools. So I'm actually enjoying the opposite of that and doing some things, uh, you know, um, being a little more isolated. Other than that, you know, I'm, I'm hoping during this downtime, as soon as we're able, maybe we'll get together, Justin and I and Adam, maybe start hashing out some new tool stuff in the meantime maybe try to write another ep since we're down and we can't do anything else um, i'm just kind of yeah waiting on that you know waiting around but uh that's all i've got really got going on you know? you know nobody should underestimate how unique their own voice is and how much it will be appreciated uh to to you know nurture it and let it out um and whether it's singing or playing the bass. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear all the different voices and all their different little quirks and, uh, and characteristics. Um, I know it's really beneficial to play other people's songs to learn 
to practice and understand how people do things. But ultimately, for me anyway, the most inspiring stuff is the stuff I've never heard before. And I think anyone learning music or learning how to play the bass shouldn't forget that, that there's really something magical and unique and beautiful about their, themselves.